blessings, blessings. I pray that all is well. How's everybody doing today? I'm going to find some music to play right quick. How's everybody doing? Welcome you to Deliver Me Nuggets. My name is Apostle Elisa Biggers. And on this station, we talk about deliverance. We talk about deliverance of yourself, learning how to deliver yourself. And so for the month of August in the local church, we're talking about making it last forever. And we're talking about having a lover with benefits. And so the lover that we're talking about is God being our lover. And so uh, a lot of times, uh, we, a, a lot of times when you watch TV, everything is about love is always overrated. Um, you know, everybody wants to be in love. And you know what? Love is a good thing. But it's a dangerous thing when you love somebody else more than you love yourself. I'm going to say that again. It's a dangerous thing when you love somebody else more than you love yourself. Why is it dangerous? It's dangerous when you love somebody else more than you love yourself because God lives within you. And so when you do not know how to love the Lord, your God that lives on the inside of you, what you're doing is making somebody else your God. And when you make another person, whether or not it can be your child, it can be your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever it may be, when you begin to love somebody so much that you make them your God, you begin to worship them. You begin to do everything you can to please that person. And so you got to understand the Bible say that God is a jealous God. And so a lot of times people lose themselves trying to get to, um, to when, they, when they love a person, they lose themselves because everything they do now is trying to make that person happen. When they lose themselves, when they don't even know what makes them happy, it's with blessings to you. It's because now they're trying to now seek um, what can they do to please this other person. And so, and this is why this is very dangerous. This is where you got to be able to understand. The Bible tells us to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul. And so when you don't love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, you're giving the love that you're supposed to be giving him, you're giving it to another person. And guess what God is looking at? It? He's looking at that as a form of jealousy. He's looking at it like you are, you're worshiping that other person and you only supposed to be worshiping him because God put us here on earth to worship him. And so the, the, the first thing that we got to recognize is we got to look at who taught you how to love. Where, where, where did you learn about loving another person? Loving how a, a, a parent should love their child, how a man should love a woman, or how a woman should love a man. Who taught you how to love? Because guess what? If the person that taught you how to love, if they did not love God first, they showed you how to put another individual first, and they showed you how to make another person your God. And so when you look at our television, you see a lot of people worshiping other people, and other people are all they gods, and people want to be treated like a God. It's where some people don't want you to love yourself. They don't want you to take care of yourself. They want you to do everything to please them and we got to understand this is not God I'm going to be coming from uh, Jer I mean Genesis 29 and I talked about a couple weeks ago how the story between Leah and Jacob and understanding that Jacob he liked he loved it, Rachel but he did not love Leah and it talked about how Leah she was willing to go to bed she was willing to marry somebody who did not even like her she was willing to marry somebody that you know what the Bible say that uh, Rachel was beautiful to him but it said that he did not like Leah and so because she loved him more she wanted him so much more that she wanted to be a 
alone by herself. And sometimes when you love a person more than you love yourself, you will give up of yourself to please them. Because even because of that spirit of abandonment, when some are so abandoned, all they want is to please another individual. And you got to understand, it's idol worship. And this is what we have to repent. And when we say, God, well, I have made my children my God. I made my spouse my God. I made my job my God. Whatever that you give your attention to, when you begin to love something more than you love God, you have made that thing your God and you have made that thing your idol. And so this is what we got to begin to learn how to love ourselves. Why do I got to love myself? Because God lives within me. He lives within me. And so as I begin to cultivate my relationship with him, he's going to show me how to have a relationship with another person. So that means I got to start spending time with myself. That means I got to start listening to my thoughts. I got to pay attention to what's going on in my mind, what's going on in my heart. Because when I don't value myself and I listen more to you than I listen to myself, I have now made you my God. Now, how can God be God in my life if I'm not even listening to the God that lives on the inside of me because I'm too busy trying to listen to another person? See, this is where we got to really wake up and we got to recognize what we are doing because when we're spending so much time trying to please other people, we're, please, we're spending so much time showing them that they are important to us, but yet you're not spending time in prayer. Do you not know that prayer is your number? number one weapon against the enemy because when you begin to pray when you begin to study the word you are cultivating your relationship with the God that lives on the inside of you and so when you do not bless us to you and so when you don't cultivate your relationship with the God that lives on the inside of you, you are showing him that you got a problem with him. You are showing him that you don't want to talk to him. And a lot of times when people get ready to read the Bible, they say it's boring. I don't understand it. We got to understand what that means. That means that you don't hear the voice of God in his word. That means that you do not have a connection with him. That means that there's some type of separation between you and God. So when you read the word and you don't understand what you're reading and you don't hear his spirit speaking to you through the word, that means you have now formed a disconnection and this is where you now need to invite Christ to come back into your heart and you got to repent for whatever you've been doing and you got to begin to stop giving your love and stop worshiping this other God that you got here on earth because it's easy to worship somebody who you see when God said, I want you to worship me. God wants you to worship to him because he's the true and living God. He's the creator of the, the heavens and the earth. But a lot of times it's easy to love somebody that you can see. But when you're learning how to love yourself, you are learning how to love God. Why? Because God lives in your house. God lives into this body. Not the church building. He lives inside of your body. And so when you can't stand and look at yourself in the mirror, you got to understand you, gotta, you got issues with self-hatred. You got issues with the God. You got issues with God because guess what? He made you. And if he made you to look the way that you look and yet you don't like it because you're comparing yourself to another person, you're telling God what he made was not good enough. Blessing, Marquisa. And you got to begin to understand that as a children of God, you got to begin to pay attention to your thoughts. So when he said in the scriptures, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. That means you got to begin to learn how to cultivate your relationship. You got to learn to get in that word. You got to make time. You got to read different Bible versions. You got to go to Bible study. Go to Sunday school. You got to be willing to invest in this relationship with him. Why? Because you're letting him, you know what, I'm giving you my best. No longer am I going to do everything else and not make time for you. But this is where you're saying, God, I'm going to make time for you. <coughs> Excuse me because you are important to me but if he's not important to you guess what you're not going to make time and so a lot of times we spend time doing everything else because we say that this is what i gotta do but no you can't afford not to not make time for the god that lives on the inside of you because see when you don't you'll find yourself giving up yourself to another God. You'll find yourself giving your love to somebody else and then you'll wonder, why don't they love me? You know
know why that person don't love you? They can't love you because they don't know what love is. And because sometimes we get so dysfunctional because we're looking at our upbringing. We looked at whoever raised us and they showed us how to give our best to other people, but they did not show us how to give love to ourselves. And so we're wondering, how come they not loving me? How come they ain't treating me the way that I treat them? The reason why? Because they don't know what love is. And this is why God told us we need to learn to love him first because when you love him first, he is the pattern to show you what type of relationship that you need to get in. Because a lot of times, if you're in a relationship with a person and if they're not willing to learn what the love of God is, if they don't have a relationship with God, guess what? They don't know what to give you because they don't have it themselves. How can I show you how to make a cake if nobody never showed me how to make a cake? And so a lot of times we saying, I want somebody to love me when really you don't really know what love is because we mimic what we see on television. We mimic what we see with our upbringing. We mimic what we see with our peers. And a lot of times we are following people that really do not know what the love of God is. Because when you look at 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the Bible say that love love is patient. It talk about that love being kind. And so a lot of times when you find yourself in something that you're not being treated kind, when you find yourself where people are jealous of you, people want you to neglect yourself to take care of them. You got to begin to understand and recognize that it's not love. You know what? This is not just about a man and woman relationship. This can be meaning with a parent and child relationship because some people are so uh, damaged. They're so broken. They will begin to hurt their children because they don't know what love is. If it's beneficial to them, they will do whatever they got to do that will please themselves and neglect their kids. You got so many spouses, they will neglect another spouse because guess what? They only know what they need and they're not trying to give another spouse what they need and because of our insecurities because we say, I just want to be with somebody, not understanding you first got to learn to be with yourself because if you don't know how to be with yourself, guess what? You're going to struggle being with somebody else, especially if the other person is demanding, especially if the other person that don't love themselves, guess what? They're going to have you pouring so much into them that you're not going to have time to pour into yourself. And when you look at our culture, you looking at a bunch of broken people that don't know how to take care of themselves. They neglect themselves trying to prove to another person that they love them. We got to understand that when you love yourself more than you, when you love another person more than you love yourself, you are led by your feelings and you are led by your emotions. You got blessings to you. You got to understand God never meant for us to be at a place where we're always led by our feelings. Can I tell you your feelings and your emotions will lie to you. Your feelings will tell you somebody care for you and they really don't care for you. Your, your emotions will tell you, oh, it's going to be all right. Oh, it's going to get better when really in reality, you know that it's not getting better, but because you will lie to yourself because you want to hold on to this person because you don't want to be by yourself. And see, and this is what this spirit of making somebody else your God, it's called idol worship. This is why in the Bible, the biblical times, God had a problem with the children of Israel because they spent their time giving their love to everybody else. They was worshiping the prostitute. They was worshiping the food. They was worshiping the wine. They was doing a lot of different things. So when you look at our day and time, you got people worshiping social media. They worshiping the television. They worshiping music. They worshiping their job. They worshiping a man or woman. They worshiping money. And so a lot of times you may not think that it's worship, but to God it's a form of worship because he's looking at it you're giving this thing more time than you're giving him and so if you're giving a situation or a purpose a person more time than you giving your uh god that thing is your God. And guess what God will do? God will allow you to worship another God. He will allow you to go through some trials and tribulations because you did not get convicted. When Holy Spirit tried to tell you, you're making them your God. They always on your mind. You wake up thinking about them. You go to bed thinking about them. But you ask yourself, where did you spend that time with God? You did it. So this is how you got to recognize that when you're loving somebody else more than you love yourself, 
yourself, you are in a dangerous place because you're separating yourself from God. You're bringing a spirit of ignorance because now when you are ignorant, in other words, you're blind, there's a separation, and you cannot hear God's voice because you have separated yourself from him. See, we got to go beyond it. just say, I go to church, but it's where you got to learn to become the true church. This is where you got to become the word. You got to become the spoken word where you allow the spirit of God to convict you. When you allow the spirit of God to talk to you, to show you, hey, you spending too much time on that television, or you spending too much time talking to your friends, and he's calling you back to a place of prayer. He's calling you back to a place of getting in that word, but when you choose not to get in that word, what you are doing is you are worshiping another God. And so I got a text right here from Proverbs 22 and verse 24. He say, make no friendship with an angry man. So in other words, he's saying, so why are you giving all your affection, your agreement with somebody that's angry? How come you trying to please somebody that's angry? How come you trying to please somebody? You can't hear me? Say yes, say something if you can't hear me. Because on my connection, I see that I you can hear. Can somebody text? Can you hear me? And so he's letting us know we have to be on a place. We have to be at a place where we're learning to say, God, I need you to show me. Okay, good, 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 good. This is where you got to say, God, I need you to show me why, where, where am I going wrong? What did I do to make this person or my job or my car? Where did I go wrong to make this person my God? Because when you start giving all your attention to try to please somebody else, you got to be able to look within yourself. You got to pay attention to your thoughts. You got to pay attention to your feelings. This is why when we get ready to read and you feel cold as ice when you're reading the word of God, this is letting you know you got to do some uh, emergency surgery. You got to get with somebody that's going to, you know what, help you get back connected to God because this is what's going on. People, there's a disconnect from God. People just assuming just because you go to church, that does not mean that you're connected to God. Anybody can go to church. The devil can go to church. God wants a personal relationship with you. And so if if you don't have that relationship, what do I mean with a relationship? You hear him talking to you. He wake you up in the middle of the night. He's trying to get your attention. He's putting something on your mind. He wants you to be asking him what it is. The more questions you ask, you need to listen so he can speak it to your spirit to let you know what it is that he's trying to say to you. Because if you're not asking God any questions, guess what? You're letting him know you're satisfied with what you're doing and people are getting disappointed when they pray and they expecting God to do all these things when he's looking at it. Listen, I'm in a relationship with you, but you ain't even talking to me. I'm in a relationship with you, but you giving my love to another person. And he said here, you got yourself, you're entangled. You're entangled with an angry person because you spend all your time because you saying, I don't, what, what did I do to make them mad? How come what I, what I cook you don't like? What do I need to do to please you? And he's looking and said, well, you're doing all of this to try to please this person, but you're not doing this for me. So you got to begin to understand we have gotten this thing all backwards because when you look at our culture, they make it seem like, you know what, this is what you're supposed to do. No, you first got to learn to love God first, learn to love yourself. And when you learn to love yourself, you're not going to be connecting yourself with somebody who's going to know how to love God themselves. And guess what? You all are going to know how to treat each other this in relationships across the board because god is looking for us to display his love on the earth because can i tell you one thing about the love of god it's unconditional we can make god mad and god is still going to love you we can make god mad and he's still going to watch over you he's still going to protect you yes he's going to show you where you have wronged that but he's not going to cut you off he's not going to kill you he's not going to murder you but when you look at our television when people make other people mad they want to write people off they want to kill people they want to make life difficult for that person this is where we got to begin to look at it and say you know what god forgive me because i have made 
This man and this woman, my God, I have made my children, my God. I have made my job, my God. I have made this business, my God. What it is in your life that you are giving more of your attention to than you're giving to God. Because this is what we're talking about today. When you love someone else more than you love yourself. Because when you love, your, if you can't love yourself 100, you ain't loving God 100. That's what this means. Because why, why, why do I have to love myself more? Because when you love yourself more, you got to know how to value you. Because when you know how to value you, you already going to set up some boundaries. You're going to already say, no, this is what I'm not going to do. No, this is not, I'm not going to accept this. You're going to know what to accept and what not to sell but when you don't know when you don't know love when you don't even feel like you're nobody when you feel invisible when you feel like you don't matter when you feel like people don't care about you you will accept anything and then you got to understand god will never allow you to get in a health or get in a good relationship when you first do not know how to value yourself and some people wondering well i'm alone and i just want to be with somebody well the first thing the reason why god got you alone because because he first trying to teach you how to love yourself because right now you hate yourself because you don't want to do anything with yourself. What's wrong with taking yourself to the park? What's wrong with taking yourself out to dinner? What's wrong with taking yourself out to the movies? What's wrong with reading a book? What's wrong with going back to school? You got to be willing to invest in yourself because what you want from another person, you got to be willing to get it from yourself. You got to become the very thing what you said that you want in another person. I want somebody who gonna love me well first you got to love you because when you love you now you're not going to turn around and make this person a god this is why a lot of times people have repeat been repeating the same cycles every relationship you get in you're making people your god and you wonder why are they abusing me why are they mistreating me why are they treat me like this because you're not learning the lesson we got to understand holy spirit is talking to us because we got to learn from our mistakes we got to learn from previous relationships we got to learn what did we do wrong in the past, what it is what we did not listen. This is why you got to say, God, are you pleased with you and our relationship? This is why you got to say, God, you know what? Are you hearing God's voice? Are you hearing him talking to you? Are you allowing him to deal with you? Are you getting closer to him in the word? Because if you're not finding yourself getting closer to him in the word, if you're not finding yourself where you said, I'm understanding our relationships, you got to understand God is jealous. So why would God? God allow somebody to come in your life to take all your attention and yet you don't even know him when uh, you got to understand the purpose he brought you here on earth is to do a work for him he brought you here on earth because he loved you and this is why he said here make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man thou shalt not go lest thou turn his lest thou learn from his ways and get a snare to your soul and so the bible is telling us a lot of times we get ourselves caught up in traps the, the word snare is a trap we get ourselves in, in a snare because you want what you want when really it's what your flesh want but it's not good for you and so we assume when something is good to our flesh we assume that it's good for us when understanding if you're not growing you're not maturing you're not becoming a better person you got to understand that that is a snare because when you find your life going downhill when you're being mean you're a liar you're a manipulator you're, you're you're not reading your bible you're not getting close to god you're not praying you just doing whatever this person wants you to do your life is not in the direction that god wanted it to be you're not going in another direction that he ain't never meant for you and this is what we got to begin, begin to understand in the nugget today you got to ask yourself honestly, God, where have I made another person, my job, my children, my money, where have I been worshiping another God? Show me in my life where I have been neglecting you. Show me where I've been uh, um, loving somebody more than I've been loving myself. Because can I tell you, if you don't listen to the nugget. I can tell you, I was like this for years. I did not love myself. 
I was trying to love other people by trying to buy them, making them happy with me. And guess what? Because I was trying to get fulfillment out of pleasing other people, thinking that it was going to make me feel better about me when I used to wonder why they're, how come they not treat me the same way that I treat them? Not understanding, God was trying to let me know there was a void missing within me, and he was trying to draw me back to look at myself. And see, and this is where when I was around other people who did not love themselves, so I thought what I was doing was normal. And so this is where when you getting around healthy people, you should be able to say, you know what? How come I'm not growing? How come, you know what? I'm always trying to please somebody, and yet, you know what? I'm always left out here on the end. How come I'm always got the short end of the stick? So this is where you got to be willing to look within yourself and you got to be honest with yourself because that's what delivered me from me negatives about when you're willing to look at yourself and be honest with yourself and say I'm missing it this is where you got to begin to say you know what I have not been listening I have not been treating myself the way that I needed to treat myself I, I don't even listen to my own thoughts if we're always so busy and you don't even know what's going on in your mind the Bible says so is a man thinking in his heart so is he so when you always saying I ain't good enough. I'm frustrated. I'm disappointed. And then yet you're not trying to find a solution. Go back to your creator and say, what am I doing wrong? What it is in my life that you're not pleased with. But when we go and try to uh, like that little game babies play, they can have a square, but they trying to put it in a triangle. And that's what we try to do instead of going back to the person that made us. And this is what we got to say, God, what it is that's within me where I am missing the beat. Where is it where I'm not listening to you. I need you to open up my eyes and you got to be willing to listen because when you're not willing to get by yourself, turn the music off, turn the radio off, sit down in a room by yourself and listen to your thoughts, listen to what's going through your head. And it will show you that some of us are in bad shape. Some of us, we just busy doing stuff and you're never getting better. You're busy helping everybody else, but you're not helping yourself. Something is wrong with that picture because guess what? If you get down, who's going to help you? Because when you're stressed out, who's helping you? When you get sick, who's helping you? Because when you're not building up your own temple, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when you're not building up your temple, when it's your time to go through, you got to ask yourself, have you fortified yourself for when it's your time to go through? Have you prepared yourself when you get ready to go through trials and tribulations? Because guess what? If you have not prepared yourself, you're going to catch it. This is why you see so many people are backsliding. So many people are angry at God. But if they really be truthful with themselves, they did not prepare. They did not prepare to study. They did not prepare to deal with their issues. God came to heal the whole man. God did not just to come to make sure we got a nice house, nice car, and we got money, and we got nice materialistic things. He said that I want you to be in good health, and I want your soul to prosper. That's your inner being. That's your mind. He wants you to grow in your soul. He wants you to change. He wants you to learn from your past mistakes. He wants you to face your fears. He wants you to be able to deal with with unresolved issues in your life. But if you're not dealing with these things, you got to be honest with yourself and understand you are not prospering. It may look good on the outside because if you're not prospering, you'll find yourself being like uh, Leah in Genesis 29, uh, uh, sleeping with somebody that don't love you, having four babies. And it took her four babies to realize, I'm not going to keep having babies by this man to make this man to love me. Because guess what? A lot of times you can find yourself giving, 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 and it's still that person still won't love you if that's not what they want to do. And so how come it's taking us so long to catch on? How long it's taking us so long to catch on that you know what? This is not for me. Yeah, you're a good person, but yet you're not good for me. Yet this family member, yet they're a good person, but yet you're, you're, you're not a good environment for me. You need to be able to look at who's around you and if it's not good for your soul, if it's not good for your well-being, you got to know how to put yourself as proper 
priority to say, you know what, just like Leah, no more. The Bible say after the fourth baby, they say, they say, she said, I'm not going to do this no more. She said, I'm not going to keep having babies trying to make him love me. You got to begin to stop the toxic behavior. You got to begin to stop the toxicity because you don't love yourself. And you, if you don't know what love is, this is why you got to educate yourself and find out what is love because love is not sex. Love is not buying you what you want. Love is not making you happy. Love is you making yourself happy because when you learn to make yourself happy, you taking the restrictions off everybody else and you doing what you need to do to become a better person. It's your responsibility. This is why God saying you are the pastor of your life. Your body is his church and you are the pastor. This is where you got to get the information from the word of God and you apply it to your life. You allow him to convict you. You allow him to show you in areas in your life where you're missing it. You allow him to show you. The Bible said that when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The Bible said the old things have passed away and behold, all all things have become new. Why haven't we become new? We haven't become new because you have made other people your gods. You have spent too much time worshiping other people, trying to make other people love you when you don't love you. And you can't expect somebody else to do something that you're not willing to do. So if you're not willing to be in the room with you, how can you expect somebody else to be in the room with you? If you don't want to talk to yourself, encourage your own self, how can you expect somebody else to encourage you? This is why we should go back to a place of prayer and say, God, I missed it. I need to get back connected to you. I need to get back to my first love. And I want to repent. Repent means to change. It doesn't mean just I'm sorry. You saying I need to get back into right standing with you and I need you to forgive me where I have been doing everything else and I've been making you last on the totem pole. This is where I'm going to choose to make you priority in my life because I understand when I make you priority in my life, I'm priority in your life. And so Father, I thank you for teaching me how to love myself. And this is where you learn how to put yourself first and stop putting other people ahead of you putting yourself. Yeah, the Bible said, that's why the Bible say love your neighbor as yourself but it's talking about when you are healthy it's not talking about when you're broken it's not talking about when you're wounded it's not talking about when you don't know who you are you got to begin to understand that the agape love of god is unconditional and we got to be honest with ourselves a lot of the love that we've been seeing it's not it's not unconditional love it's based on conditions because when people don't do what we want them to do some people love changes and this is where you got to realize that's not the love of god god want us to have his love not the love that we see on television not the love that's pleasing to your flesh but the love of God. Because when you got the love of God, this is where God saying, now I'm going to bring somebody to your life because I know that you're not going to make them your God. I know you're not going to put them ahead of me because you understand who's been taking care of you before this person came into your life. And so I pray that this nugget got you thinking. I pray that this nugget got you really uh, recognizing in your life, do you got other gods in your life? Are you worshiping other gods? Are you so entertaining other gods that you begin to give God your last? This is where we got to repent and we got to say, God, you know what? Forgive me because I have missed it. Forgive me where I have been looking, putting my eyes on somebody else when I should have been putting my eyes on you. Because this is where God's saying, I'm looking for a church without a spot wrinkle or blemish that's the kind of bride that he's coming for he's coming for a bride that's learning how to love the way that he loves because you can't say that you're married to christ when you when you're cheating on him with other lovers when other people got more of your time and yet you're coming to him blessings to you oh man of god and congratulations and so this is where god wants us to understand are you loving somebody else more than you love me because when you love somebody else more than you love yourself, you are cheating on God. And you got to understand, when you are not giving yourself, you're cheating on yourself for another person. You're supposed to love yourself. That's why the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Because why? God lives within you. When you get right in that love, 
Now you're going to learn how to treat yourself. And now you're going to know what to expect in a relationship all across the board. But if you don't know how to love yourself, you're going to keep going around the same cycle, wondering around, why I keep getting the same relationship. It's different people, but it's still the same kind of foolishness. It's because you have not learned how to love yourself. And it's because you've been worshiping other people. You've been trying to please other people. You've been trying to make other people happy instead of trying to love and please God. Because when you love and please God, he's going to bring it back to you, teaching you how to love yourself. So when you don't know how to love and treat yourself, you ain't going to know how to love another person. So this is Apostle Lisa Biggers. I pray that this nugget got you thinking. I pray that it got you saying, let me look at my life. Let me look at what am I doing? Because am I giving my love to another person? Am I worshiping other gods? And yet I've been cheating on God? Because could that be, that's the reason why you haven't got your breakthrough? Could it be that's the way things are, the way that it is in your life? Because you're busy doing everything else. And yet you're loving on God last. I pray that this message was a blessing to you. I will see you all Thursday on Deliver Me From Me. This is Apostle Lisa Biggers, and I'm signing out.